We change ourselves for other people's benefit, for other people's happiness and approval. Meanwhile, they don't even care, but yet they still make it a big deal to tell us that they don't like us. And I have to stop internalizing the heat that others have given me. what is up you guys so it is your girl the qt here and i'm back with i would say another qt talk uh this is actually very late night which i don't know what time i usually film but this is a very late night like i'm chill i'm in bed i'm in my robe i'm usually dressed really chill but still so it is the day well now we're actually two days after my birthday so happy memorial day it is may 31st 2021 right now and like the very wee hours of the morning i just got finished watching isi meme adeko's um late night vent session her latest one where she was talking about um just kind of spewing self-hate in high school and i just wanted to come and talk to you guys and give you guys a message from my birthday i wanted to post a video on my birthday which was two days ago on the 29th but i did not like the message did not come to me until i was heading home like really late that night and i was just trying so hard like i knew i had to consciously consciously i knew i had to put in that effort to celebrate myself because i'm not gonna lie for a birthday i don't think i really felt celebrated on my birthday since maybe i'm gonna say 18 and then the time before that i'm gonna say was 10. not to say that my parents didn't no, no 13. Not to say that my parents did not put in effort. So I feel like the, you know, the birthdays that I remember, that I, I remember, like, and I remember the feeling of being celebrated and feeling really good, you know, and feeling like it's my birthday, was my, um, my 10th birthday. Of course, I know about my first birthday party, but of course, I don't have, like, that me memory of it. But I'm going to say I know I, I see pictures all the time of my first birthday. I felt really celebrated because both my mom and my dad's side came together and they just were happy to celebrate my life and in and, and you know as i grew up it just always felt like my life was the blemish like one of those like literally my life was being me being here was a bad part to their life like it's like they suffered in life because i was born um and i would always feel that way and I know that that would be because they just, they were taking out what they felt towards, or truly what they felt, but my paternal side felt towards my mother, my, my, my maternal side on me sometimes, or I would just feel that energy. And I felt like I always had to compensate for that, but that's a different topic. But, um, yeah, so I, on my birthday, I really... I had this thing where I was looking for a bag, like a handbag of mine, and I couldn't find it. And so then, because I couldn't find it, I started to get mad. But instead of getting mad that I couldn't find it, I started to say I hate myself. Like, I literally said the words, I hate myself. And I'm like, why did I even say that? And yeah, y'all, so this is sort of why it's inspired by Isimei Mayadeko, but also just more so I'm questioning why I would sell myself I hate myself like I was screaming I hate myself for like a good 10 minutes and I don't know what that was but that is one not the energy that I want to put in the universe too that is just like why would I say that about myself you know like forget being a college graduate forget any of that stuff I have been spewing a lot of self-hate recently and I was thinking about like where does this come from and why did I start this? Because I keep going back, like, you know, just being placed in, like, the place where I grew up back in New York. And I keep going back to myself, like, well, why? I keep asking the questions. And, you know, just being in my 20s, I'm asking my que myself questions, like, why do I do things this way? Why do I react this way? Why am I now feeling these feelings that I never felt before? Just why? And I'm not going to lie, I think it's a lot of manifestation of childhood trauma. So the first day of my high school career, um, or one of the, or the very first month of high school, my freshman year, there was literally a class discussion where we, where, where we, where the consensus was made that the other kids in the class did not want to do work with me because they felt like I spoke too proper and you know because i dressed you know a little i would say preppy because i was dressing preppy and because i understood you know and i'm because i spoke proper english my my main language was not 
Ebonics or AAVE for the most part. Like I understood AAVE from my parents just a little bit, which they barely spoke AAVE. They mostly spoke proper. Like even today, if I try and speak AAVE to my mom, my mom is going to just, she's going to correct me. And she's like, no, we don't say that. Stop saying that. And it still gets on her nerves to this day. But I say all that to say during high school, I went through a ton of hate so much hate i'm not gonna lie i feel like i got hate you know every year um and then if you ask me i feel like i had to prepare every year like holiday season to me that is like the most hateful season because you have everybody else like hate, hate strangers hating on strangers and then for me you like it's for me personally holiday season like christmas and new year's and all that stuff really truly christmas always felt like it was a battle like a war like I had to go to war with my family that because I had to defend myself and defend my mother against my family and so it just felt like a war and I was so I would experience personal hate and I was like you know with family and I would experience hate hate but then I would also experience hate like hate in school which of course you know you always experience I feel like a lot of people experience a lot of hate in high school but in hi my high school if you were not on the track team or if you were not if you were doing things that I were not that yeah if you were not on the track team you know not not worried about good grades you were one of the cool kids and if you didn't and if you just didn't really question or do anything outside the box you were a cool kid and they a lot of people did not understand me and i live a life where a lot of people did not understand me and i would often try and make people understand me as i said at 21 i learned it is not my job to make people understand me anymore like it's not my job if you understand me you understand me if you don't you don't if you want to put in the work to understand me and be a part of my life then that's what you want to do if you don't want to do that work then you don't want to do that work but i'm not here to teach you like that's not my job to teach you to understand me if you were meant to understand me then you would understand me in your lifetime and in mine so um i think that that is just very important like the fact that i called myself and i said i have and i said i hate myself and i'm like okay so where is this coming from like now that after watching EC's um, video, I said, where is this coming from? And I realized I grew and I realized I did. I moved through high school with like with a lot of dignity and strength. Like these, like, you know, a lot of people, like I said, were giving me hate and I moved through high school and with everybody giving me hate, it bounced right back off. And I will continue to just say I love myself. Not that I did all the, like, you know, self-care stuff. Because I, I hated literally doing self-care anything because I always felt like it was selfish. And I always felt like my dad did it. And I felt very, like, when my, whenever my dad did it, I felt left out. And I felt like he did not see me or want to be with me or want to spend time with me. Which made me feel like, okay, I'm not going to make anybody else feel the same way. Now I do want, now I am practicing self-care again. But... Still, that was one of the things that I felt. <laughs> but then I realized when I got to college, or just like the high school and college phase, I realized the the people that did get the attention that I wanted. So I did put a lot of I I did put a lot of emphasis on boys because I knew I had my academics on lock. But all right, I knew that the things that got people attention that I wanted to receive, you know, or that made people listen. Or, I mean, or even today, like with my boyfriend and his family and just trying to maybe impress his family. Whereas, whereas my family were like, I don't I don't really care. You can, my family, like you or not, like they're not a big portion of my life where they're going to be a... They're not a big portion of my life where I'm going to let them affect my relation, my, my relationships. Because they're not understanding me to affect my relationships. Like, it's, it's all up to me. Ultimately up to me. You can meet them or not. Like, it's, I don't care. But... <laughs> Um, I think just, you know, I feel like every stage in life since, since high school, I have had to go, or every stage in life period, I've had to go through judgment. And I feel like it just only started to manifest itself in a way that where I started to internalize it recently. So I would say maybe the past three years. Yeah. I'm going to say after sophomore year of college is when I really started to internalize it. Because I remember after I failed those two classes, 
I, um, what was that? My second semester? No, my third semester of college, I failed two classes. And I remember when I, when I failed those two classes and I had to come home and tell my dad, it was just like a whole big blow up. And I'm already very, very, very hard on myself. Like, because of where, I'm a very, very, very critical person to myself. And because of where I am in life right now, I feel very, you know, I go back and forth between feeling like, okay, I'm proud of myself for getting to this point. But then I go back and forth between like, damn, I should be so much farther. And I'm trying, and I've been actively trying to tell myself, stop wishing to be farther and just do the things and put in the work to get where I want to be. But just give myself grace as I'm getting there. And that's been a huge thing. I don't give myself grace because I expect myself to be at my step 10 and I'm mad at myself because I'm only at step five. And I'm mad at myself because of things that I cannot control. And I'm mad at myself because of the same reasons that people have expressed that they hate me. And I have to stop internalizing the hate that others have given me. But I'm not going to lie. Sometimes when you do hear those, even if you have like a good relationship with somebody, when you hear those you know, comments and then they don't get resolved or you're forever hearing them or you're hearing them on a repeated basis, they stick with you. Even if they were just one time, they stick with you. And especially when they're your parent or your guardian or somebody that you hold in high regard and that you really want to impress. Um, I just feel like I've been, like every stage of life, I have received a lot of hate. But only recently have it has, I have, I started internalizing that hate. And that's why I think I said to myself yesterday on my birthday, that I hate myself and that is just like so horrible I should have never said that just because I could not find a bag I think one that was really the catalyst that and the fact that I did not want to share but yeah I just I, I just wanted to like uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm very sad all the time because I feel like I'm hearing what these people are saying they're telling me I'm hearing what a lot of people are saying. A lot of people are telling me, you're you're too smart. <sighs> Alright, this probably sounds all over the place. But basically, <sighs> this probably sounds all over the place. But basically, the things that make me different, have I feel like I have always experienced them, some type of hate for. And I really have to just step into this place now that I'm... You know, I feel like that's what I really want 22 and beyond to be. Especially really just 22, like this next year, just in the, this next phase of life. I want it to be as I step into this, as I step, I really, I want it to be me stepping into my divine purpose and, you know, back in, and stepping back into self-love. I want me to really wash away the hate. I feel like. You know, just being back in New York, I'm I'm faced with a lot of differences. The fact that I'm a college grad, the fact that I'm an HBCU grad, you know, the fact that um, a lot of my peers who we have been conditioned to go to school and get a job or just go to college, even finish college, even if you didn't want to go, you know, to school, like go away to college, um, we, a lot of them have dropped out, unfortunately, and you know, just coming back and me being one of the few people in my neighborhood who actually did graduate from college when, when my neighborhood actually had the resources to go and graduate to and graduate college. It's just like really crazy and mind blowing to me. But again, my differences are what makes me unique. And my differences are what makes me me and what makes me a great person. Not what me, my, the things that make me different from other people are not a bad thing and I feel like I continue to I continue to apologize for me being different and I have to stop you know I know I apologize for being different in high school when I stopped eating or in middle school when I stopped eating a lot of meat um when I started cutting meat out of my diet I started apologizing and I still apologize to this day with um my boyfriend's family um and his friends and I don't know why I feel the need to make or impress or just make people happy just because I care. 
you know, just to make them happy. Like, even on my birthday, I was like, I have to go outside because my friend came all this way and I have to, and now she came all this way to go outside. Like, I'm like, I can't just now, like, say, okay, I don't want to go in the outside anymore. I, I don't want to go celebrate my birthday anymore. I have to celebrate my birthday for the sake of my friend, not for the sake of celebrating me. And I don't, like I said, I did not feel like I actually ce celebrated my birthday, I would say, since 18. So... Or celebrated on my birthday since 18 like this felt like a young celebrated like oh my god like I actually had a good time and I celebrated myself <laughs> and I think that I'm losing and I think that with everybody spewing hate on me I started to lose love for myself and you know now I have to really drain that hate out to build the love back up and I don't want to carry their hate for me anymore. I don't want to carry their hate. And I know that's so much easier said than done. But I do not want to carry the hate that others have for me anymore. You know, like my... Di my differences are not my weaknesses. My differences are my strengths. You know, like I remember my differences in high school were the fact that I was... That I was a cheerleader. I was in like what three sports? Three or two? Two sports. Like five clubs. And I also had two internships. All at once. Still managed to do all of them at once. And I was on top of my academic game. And I remember just the fact that I was all of that. Like a lot of people just were like what? Like they were like why are you doing that? When all throughout high school, then we get to college, then we get to like senior year when everybody's applying to college or just like when we're about to graduate and people were like, yeah, I, they started doing everything that I wanted to do or they wished that they, that they did the things that I did want, that I did do like community service hours or, you know, like I just said, like, you know, academics, internships and same. And then when I got to college, I'm not going to lie. I felt all everybody's hate from that so I would stop saying to people that I was doing internships I would stop saying to people in college I was doing these things even my ex-boyfriend did not want me to have an internship because he didn't have an internship and he was two years older than me which means he was already two years into college when I was starting college just again the hate that people have for me the vision that people have for me I started to internalize it and I have to let that go because what they think of me or what they view for me is not the life that I view for myself, nor is it the way that I feel about myself. But I have been continuously feeling very, uh, I've just been consti like continuously feeling their hate. And so now that the damage is done, like I'm not really around the much many people, but the people that are in my life to this day, like right now, th at this present time, have a lot of love for me. But I don't have a lot of love for myself anymore because I now feel everybody else's hate for me from back, way back when. Yeah. And my battery is dying and I don't know where the other battery is, so. Okay, y'all, and we're back. So, uh, I don't know why my tripod is not really laying down. Just stay, bro. Just stay. But I'm back. I changed the battery and yeah. So I really felt like my differences were my weaknesses for a long time. Because for so long, especially in high school, I was not say bullied, but isolated because I was considered smart. You know, I was considered smart. And I think the and I think a lot of things that happened to me, you know, in my childhood, like zero to eighteen are starting to now or a lot of those feelings that I guess I felt and suppressed are now um you know rising to the surface and I think that's why I really said I hated myself but I really realized I don't hate myself I just hate you know the position that I'm in I hate the, the I hate that my room is a mess I hate that my room has always been a mess in my mother's house I hate that I have I have always allowed my space to be a mess I hate that um you know, I mean, I don't hate it. I didn't hate it at the time. You know, that's just how my mind works. I'm a Gemini. My mind basically works in, in you know, I'm going to say organized piles. If it's in, if it's too neat, my mind is a little bit like, okay, something's wrong here. If it's too neat, too, too immaculate, that's too much for me. So, um, 
yeah i think i just it's just like you know you have to get to like the root cause okay so do i hate myself or did i hate the fact that i couldn't find my bag at the time Did i hate the fact that i haven't been able to find my bag in like over a month at this point so really truly what what was it what did i hate um and you know where has a lot of this self-hate energy or behavior and behavior has been coming from also when i was young i also continued to i have i have since i was young i had continued i continuously practiced this behavior or this practice i guess of punishing myself not to the point where i um i do not you know cut myself or do anything like that but i basically you know i mean i'll starve myself one night or i'll starve myself for a few hours like okay i don't like you know i'll be mad at myself for not being able to find the bag so i'll say yeah i don't deserve to go outside i didn't finish my work which was to clean up my room um or make my room look the way that i wanted to be to before my birthday so i was gonna punish myself like yeah you don't deserve to go out and celebrate your birthday which why don't i um you know, like, there were just different factors that I just couldn't. Like, I wanted, I wanted to sleep. I couldn't be mad at myself for wanting to sleep or for accomplishing other career goals like posting every day with the exception of my birthday and the day after. Um, I, I can't... I, again, have to learn how to give myself grace. I am not somebody who really truly gives myself grace. Meanwhile, I will tell other people to give my, to give themselves grace. Or I have been, like, that person that inspires other people to give, give, give themselves grace while also going out and accomplish their dreams. Meanwhile, over here, I am internalizing... You know, people who are telling me that my dreams are impossible. I'm not t I'm not turning around and saying I'm possible. I'm just saying, oh, well, you know what? Maybe they're right. When I need to say, no, like, I can do this. Even though they're telling me that I can't. I, it, it's, it's really crazy. But again, my differences are not my weaknesses. And I know I'm repeating that. But that it's mostly for me to hear. But I know that like there's somebody else who needs to hear this. Your differences are not your weaknesses. So the things that people may single you out for being different for, that is not like something that you need to sit there and internalize. I mean, I know it's I know it's easier said than done. But if somebody singles you out for being different, you need like just own up to those differences. I have owned up to my differences, and you know, in the past five years, I have allowed other people's you know, ideologies and views of my differences or that what makes me different from them and make me feel horrible about myself. And that has to stop. And if you are feeling this way, comment down below. But my differences are not my weaknesses. They are my strengths, you know. So when I was in high school and I was, you know, doing an internship and I was, you know, um, in five orgs or something, five organizations. I was student council president. I was like freshman president and I was doing all that stuff and I wasn't drinking or smoking underage just because that just wasn't who I was. I wasn't, that did not really entice me. That's, that was a diff, those were differences that people isolated me for. But I wasn't, I wasn't like, oh my God, they, I, I mean, I did have the moments where I was like, they isolated me so nobody wants to be friends with me, blah, 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 which is true. I didn't have too many friends, but hey, Everything happens for a reason, as my mom always says. So I cannot, you know, question. I may question why. What are these reasons that they happen for? But everything happens for a reason. So yeah, I just gotta like let let a lot of things be, and I have to breathe, you know, like, and I just have to give myself grace. My differences are not my weaknesses. And I have to own up to my differences even in this day and time. You know, so, and I have to heal the fact that I was different back then in order to move to the, in order to move through the world fear, fearlessly or fiercely now. Because I feel like also now, the different, the things that are different, the things that make me different are now I feel like a, a big hindrance to what will progress me in life and I have to just not think about how I'm gonna get there and I have to not think okay or my dad is right because I'm not gonna say that my parents are like a huge portion of why I was 
thinking or you know saying that I was or having a lot of self hate. I did, I did hear self hate comments. I'm gonna say from my dad, but those are not all the things I hear from my dad. Even to this day, my dad still will say, "Yeah, no, don't let anybody tear you down for the things that make you different." So the fact that both my that I have like three parents who love me. Yes, I, I count my stepdad as a parent. I have like three parents who love me. I have my dad, my mom, and my stepdad, and they love me like so much. And my dad. And my mom and my stepdad, just the fact that they were able to provide a certain environment for me. I know that uh, that, I, that I know certain other kids did not have. You know, I never flaunted it in anybody's face. Like, oh my God, haha, my mom loves me. Your mom doesn't. I feel like that's how other people heard me. Or that's how other people took it when my parents just did things that my parents did. You know, my dad coming to pick me up from school. Oh, your dad comes pick you up from school? Yeah, like... We don't live, I'm not, he has a lid down the block. I'm not going to just be able to walk home and no, he's not going to give me bus money yet. I wasn't taking the bus yet to his house. So yeah, my dad came and picked me up from school and what, and oh, because his car is nice. Wow. Those, the, those were, those were like the moments that I felt like I had to apologize for literally being who I am. And that's when I started to be labeled the term oreo and bougie and it's like just because my dad did this for me and my and my mom did this for me and you know um the way how i dressed and the way how i spoke because i spoke proper english i was bougie because my dad picked me up from school in his you know new or shiny car that he's that he keeps very clean i'm bougie because my parents make time to spend time with me i'm bougie like that and, you know, I have to stop apologizing because other people are putting labels on me. I may own up to these labels, but if I don't own up to them, I'm not going to own up. If I don't agree with them about myself, I'm not going to own up to them. So, yeah, you can call me bougie, but ain't nothing wrong with that. Like, nothing's wrong with me being bougie or nothing's wrong with the way that my parents have shown love to me. Even to this day where I'm still receiving hate for being bougie, you know, just even with... um. You know, just meeting certain other people uh, or like I said, trying to impress like my, my boyfriend's family because I know they don't understand certain practices that I do. And not to say they're, that they're not great either, but they're and they're not really they don't really spew a lot of hate, not towards me. Like I haven't really experienced that, but there but, you know, I just I know that I'm a different person. And I know everywhere I go, everywhere I have been. I have always been that different person. I've always sort of been that oddball out. I have always been the negation to everybody in the room. And so when I walk in, I'm already walking in with, damn, I already know somebody's not going to like me. I already know it's going to be like, because I've already, I'm just, that has always been my role in life at this point where a lot of people like me. They're like very impressed by me if you're older. But then when you are my peer, when you are my age, you have like a lot of people at my age and my peers have spewed a lot of hate. <sighs> Ooh, so a lot of hate, y'all. A lot of hate. And again, it is not my job to continue this hate. But what have I made it my mission to do in these past years? Internalize that hate. And I really have to stop because again. Their hate for me is a reflection of their of themselves. My friend Troy said that, you know, like the way how they feel about me is truly a reflection of reflection of themselves. It is not a reflection of me. Um and I have to stop and turn and I have to stop internalizing or continuing their hate. And I have to stop hating on myself because I'm different. You know, like technically we are all different as my boyfriend likes to remind me. We are all different. We all have different things that make us different. He's different from me. And the fact that kids at his high school have, you know, actually did put on, put an emphasis on like, you know, academics or, you know, maybe the fact that in his state that he went to school, um, you know, high school and that like they cared about technical schools. Meanwhile, in New York, we don't we look down upon technical schools. Like if you go to a technical school, you go into an alternative school. But, you know, I think just it's really important to me also that I do not spew the same hate to others that I, that was poured onto me, which is why instead of, you know, pouring it back out or just taking the hate out, 
I say, okay, I have to keep it. I have to keep it. I have to keep it because if I don't, I'm going to give it to others and others and they don't deserve others undeservingly. So if somebody does something to me, I'm I'm going to do it. I'm going to undeservingly give them hate, which I don't need to do. They don't deserve that. They don't. So like if my friends, you know, may say a comment to me that I don't agree with or if my friends may do something to me that I don't speak up about, then I'm going to then I don't I don't need to speak back to them the same hate that was spoken on to me. So I don't usually want to, so I usually just like make myself the target. I allow myself to be the target of, of, of hate from others while also, um, as I try and get rid of the hate, I'm the same target from by myself and I have to, so I have to also stop targeting myself with so much hate. Oof, y'all. What, what, what's basically the term of this video is. My differences are not my weaknesses. They are my strengths. They are my strengths. The last half year, in the last six months, I have been going into opportunities um, or what is it called? Like team meetings? Just opportunities and meetings or, you know, fresh fresh starts with thinking, okay, with the with the mindset that people would already hate me because of the same differences that got me to those opportunities like me being smart me having internships me having those internships and you know those leading me to somewhere else or me having a degree and me having a degree from hbcu from an hbcu you know leading me to going to certain opportunities or things of that nature i walk into them and then they and i walk in with okay something's gonna go wrong or some or with the mindset okay let me not act let me not you know put too put forward so much of myself and of course I do you know because I know how how it works but it's the, I just have to stop and my dad is right my dad has said this to me a few weeks ago um and I know my mom did too but more so my dad had a serious talk with me like I have to stop pouring out self-hate and I have to stop walking into opportunities with the mindset that they already hate me and that they already have a dislike for me, that they already singled and I singled me out and isolated me. I have to stop walking into that opportunity as if, you know, as if I'm still in high school and I can read everybody's background because I don't know how everybody's going to react to me. And I have to really, truly just give them a chance. Ooh. Ooh, y'all. Ooh, yeah. I have to give people a chance. And I also have to give myself a chance. And I have to allow myself to be who I am unapologetically without continuing to apologize for what, for what once made me different to other people. For what I was once isolated for, I am now thriving for. Because guarantee... They may, they may make a big deal out of it, but they don't even care. We change ourselves for other people's benefit, for other people's happiness and approval. Meanwhile, they don't even care, but yet they still make it a big deal to tell us that they don't like us. That they dislike us. But again, my differences are not my weaknesses. They're my strengths. And I have to really truly move with that mindset at this point. I have to. I have to move with that mindset. It is my, it's on you that you don't like me. It's not on me. It's not on me. It's not on me. My differences are not my weaknesses. They are my strengths. And I am strong. I am resilient. And I am beautiful. And I do love myself. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you for listening. Um, Thank you for being here. Thank you for if you stay to this talk, to the end of this talk, please comment down below. Um, if you stay to the end of the talk, comment down the school emoji or write school. Um, and yeah, if you stay, that's if you stay to the end of this talk. And I thank you for if you listen to the entire thing. I know it was pretty long, but it was well, it was much much needed. And yeah, so I shall see y'all in the next video. Thank you for hearing my birthday message. Uh, yeah, I gotta step into 22 with divine 
you know, with divine love for myself and just continue to love myself at 22. For 22, I have to say, I love you. Yeah, I have to say, I love you, Q. That's what I got to say for 22. I love you, Q. I love you, Q. I have to say that for 22. Um, and that's what I want to keep saying. I want to keep saying that I love myself. I want to just really live very divine in my in a very divine purpose and in divine timing for, you know, year 22. Because I feel like year 21 was about control. But year 22 is about, you know, just divine energy. Yeah. Again, thank you guys for listening. Comment down school or 22. If you made it to the end of this video, comment, yeah, comment school or 22 for if you made it to the end of this video. And I shall talk to you guys in another video. Bye!